500 pounds, but normal price of the Model B by itself is going to be about 35 bucks. <laughs> Bearing in mind, though, we're going to give you free shipping, and we're going to give you a bunch of other answers. And if you have now. And you're not going to win if your answer to what you'll do with it is sell it on eBay. Are you sure? <laughs> right. If, if hey, your answer hey. is sell it on eBay. Be careful with them, they'll just star you. <laughs> yeah. Even if you I'm the same. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Do you want to do it in your session at this time to set it up? No. Maybe just don't bother. Um, so you look at things and each of these is that. Yeah, it may it may be requires Come on in, there's still some pumps there. Yes, yes. Oh free hug. <laughs> actually looked at getting uh, a uh, old PC XO hooked up for giving the presentation. Unfortunately, there's a uh, <clears throat> bug in X or elsewhere uh, where the, the test system we were using was not getting correct EDID data from the display and the X server would then crash. However, if the hardware was working and the software was working, there was some X problem. So uh, forgive me for using an X86 machine for this. Um, just while we wait for a couple of stragglers to come in, I'm going to grab some hardware from here. I realize we have hardware in here. Well, well, we'll have just some hardware for, for talking points, and um, if there's time at the end, I can hook up the board and I can show you guys <coughs> something running. But, uh, You've got hardware too there, Chris, right? So, yeah. Couple of boxes. Yeah. This is just a serial cable. You can hold the, uh, the wires. I will start by just talking about what the, what's going to be in this talk today, and as people come in, they won't miss very much. You give me for my voice starting here. So what I want to cover today is what ARM is, which is very brief because a lot of you already know this. Um, why we're interested in running Fedora on ARM systems. Uh, what the current status of the project is. What we're going to do. Um, in the short term, the short and medium term. How those of you here can help with the project. What we want to do in the future, uh, what you can uh, what you can currently use in terms of ARM hardware that's out there. Um, and then we might have time for a demo or two. Um, and we'll take questions. I'll uh, have a little giveaway at the end. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, let me just move the laptop up here. So, let's just go back one slide here. So, so I'm John Masters. Uh, 
John Masters on our on public IRC JCM and Red Hat. Um, this is Chris Tyler. Most of you already know that I think, but uh, uh, I'm with Red Hat. Chris is with Seneca College, um, and uh, I'll come on to the, the connection there uh, in a moment. Um, very briefly, what is ARM? Um, so. ARM um, has historically stood for various things. Uh, these days, people just use the, the, the acronym, they just use ARM. Um, um, it is the most popular uh, computer architecture out there, right? Um, you are carrying, in all likelihood, at least one ARM device right now, if not several. Your cell phone is more than likely an ARM device. Um, there were six billion, with a B, ARM chips shipped last year. Um, and that number is increasing at some crazy rate. Okay, not all of those are full-featured uh, processors like we're going to talk about today. Okay, some of them are still low-power embedded chips. You might find in a washing machine or something. But a very high number of these devices are out there. Um, and you know, your smartphone is, is almost certainly an ARM device. In the context of Fedora, when we talk about ARM. We're not talking about your iPhone, your iPad, the old palm that you have lying around at home. Um, you come on IRC and say, hey, I want to use this five-year-old device. Um, you know, we're, we're not talking about that. What we are talking about is, uh, to a certain extent, things like the old PC, the XO. Um, we are working on a lot of these kinds of uh, little uh, embedded ARM boards. So um, Chris has a here as well. Yeah. Um, so this is a Panda board. We also have a Pi here, um, another Panda board. Um, these are relatively inexpensive computers, uh, 150 bucks kind of price range for one of these. This is a dual core uh, Cortex A9. Um, which is, you know, you're looking at about a gigahertz performance with two cores. Um, you've got um, multiple video out options. You've got Ethernet. You've got USB. You've got wireless built in. You've got a um, bunch of storage options. About a gig of memory. Um, for 150 bucks, it's a pretty affordable uh, platform. Um, we also have devices like the Trim Slice here, which comes in this very sexy machined aluminum case. Um, I feel like I'm a guy on TPC, you know, the shopping channel. <laughs> um, you know, this case probably costs more than the components inside, right? Very positive. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and again, you're looking at a, a, a dual core. Uh, Brendan has one here as well. He's got oh, the model, soup dot right. model. Um, I can go ahead and pass this guy around so I can get it back. Oh, it's it fine. Sexy. Yeah. Yeah. These have got SSDs in there, or SATA devices. Getting excited. And again, you don't need a couple hundred bucks for one of these, and that could be a full desktop replacement, even at this point. As Brendan was saying, you could run two monitors off that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Chris can Chris will show you later at the Raspberry Pi talk some very impressive demos with uh, OpenGL running on on this thirty dollar board here. I don't know if you want to pass this around, because I think it's the only one we've got. So. I'll pass it around in the other time. Okay. okay, so come to the other talk, and then you get to look at it. Um, so, in the context of Fedora today, a lot of these are uh, quote-unquote embedded boards, um, because ARM historically has been a device that you've found in cell phones and small gadgets, this kind of thing. But, as anyone who has been following the tech news uh, will know, um, we're starting to see ARM servers emerging, okay, so you can, you can kind of infer that, you know, that's why some of us on the Red Hat end might be interested in you know, um, a bit more than we were historically. Um, so we're starting to see ARM servers, um, ARM as a company have announced a 64-bit architecture as well, so uh, expect to see ARM moving up in the world from its embedded roots into more mainstream, more mainline uh, computing applications over the next couple of years. Um, when you talk about when we talk about ARM, you will see a lot of confusing acronyms. You will see 
I'm version 5, I'm version 7, I'm 10, I'm 11. <coughs> if you see a, the very brief summary, because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, if you see a V, we're talking about the version of the architecture. We are talking about ARM version 7 as the current version of the ARM architecture that we support on these. Um, they are backward compatible. ARM version 8 is the 64-bit ARM um, that was announced. And you see things like ARM 10, ARM 11, those are particular implementations of the architecture. If you want the full story on all those confusing terms, and believe me, there are very similar terms in the Intel space if you're not familiar with them when you come in. Um, go look at Wikipedia, there's a great article there on the ARM architecture and disambiguation of what all the terms mean. The, the important thing to note, though, that is if there's not a V there, you can't compare it to numbers that have a V. So if you have an ARM 11 device, like a Raspberry Pi, you can't say, oh, it's, it will, you know, it's at least it's as high as an ARM V7. It's right. not. Right. An ARM 11 device is actually an ARM V6 device. Absolutely confusing. But yeah. just count it as two completely separate numbers of schemes. Yeah. This is why ARM have invented words like cortex recently, right? So there's a lot more uh, consistency these days. If you've got cortex A8 and cortex A9 devices, like this guy's an A9. Um, they've invented newer terms to really uh, disconnect the sort of pu public branding, public marketing from the version of the architecture that's uh, supported. In the context of Fedora, we support ARM version 5 and ARM version 7. Um, version 7 is the latest 32-bit architecture in all these different devices. Anything you buy now, a tablet, anything like that, is ARM version 7 based. Um, the Raspberry Pi is an, an older version of the architecture, um, but it's much cheaper and much easier to implement. So that's why this is a $30 device. Um, that's also one reason why we haven't killed off uh, ARM version 5 support in Fedora. Even though it's a number of years old at this point, um, there are still devices being made, and they are so inexpensive that you know, we'd frankly be foolish to kill off support for this at this point and, and, and preclude the amazing possibilities that you can get from, from having uh, very low cost hardware. Um, Chris will go even more into that later on. So, which one is the Raspberry Pi? Did I miss that? It's a ver it's version, it runs version 5 of the architecture. It's an older version of the architecture. Single processor, um, doesn't do SMP, doesn't have hardware floating point, all of these kinds of things. Um, in version 7, the current generation, um, have also tried to clean up a lot of the confusing r array of options. In the past, if you were making ARM chips, you had, you had various options available to you. Do I want floating point support? Do I want this? Do I want that? What they've done is say, that's, that's too confusing and stupid, right, from a software support point of view. So the current generation, anything you buy that's the latest and greatest stuff is, is much more standardized. It's all ARM version standard. It's, it's, uh, it's easy to support. There are a few exceptions that we can point out. Why would you want to run Fedora on ARM? Well, I think the main, the main reason is that it's cheap, readily available, easily hackable hardware. Okay, so Chris will go more into detail, but you know, things like the Pi um, and these other, these other boards, um, in addition to being a low-cost computer that you can play with, um, you also tend to have uh, I.O. lines on here. So if you're interested, interested in electronics hacking or building robots or something like this that run Fedora, um, you can very easily do that. You can take a, a, a Pi, um, well, I'll, I'll let you do the Pi examples. Um, you can take one of these, um, you've got these various I.O. lines here, and if you want to make a robot, you can hook up relays, you can hook up various control circuitry to this, um, and suddenly you've got, um, whereas you, you might make an Arduino device at home, be fairly limited in what you can do, this can run, have Wi-Fi, it can have a full you know, lamp stack running on it, it can run Python, you can, you can really, really make some very cool stuff. And okay. enough computing power to run robotics vision, that type of, yeah. of software. Yeah. Um, so, and at a price point that is you know, very affordable. I mean, this, this here is another board, this is a Beagle Bone. Um, you may have heard of the Beagle Board, which was the smaller kind of cousin of this guy. The uh, 
Eagle Bowen is the latest and greatest thing. It looks a bit like an Arduino. It currently costs about 60 or 70 bucks, but it's coming down in price. It's a lot like a little Arduino board, right? This can run a full version of Fedora. Um, you can have, you've got Ethernet, you've got, you know, a lot of standard interfaces. You could hook up uh, uh, something to the USB here, you know. So that, that's kind of fun, right? Um, especially shaped to fit an Altoids tin. Yes. <coughs> yes. I, actually, I, can, I can get that out here. If you buy one of these, one of the nice things is it does actually come with a branded Altoids tin. Does it have Altoids in it? Uh, no, sadly not. Ah. Um, but it, it's you know it's designed to fit uh, nicely in there. I'll pass this guy around as well. Right. Right. It's a, it's a nice little gimmick, right? That you can you can fit it in there. Um, so not only is it hackable, you can build robots, you can do all this stuff with it, but it's 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 cheap and readily available. So it, it's kind of you know back in the day when a lot of us got involved in computing and you had old PCs with ISA buses and you really felt you understood what a computer did. Uh, when PCI came out, you, you actually put cards in your computer. Um, on, on some level, um, ARM sort of returns you to uh, a feeling that you're connected with how your computer's working. At the same time, you're getting the latest and greatest technology. So you're not spending thousands of dollars then ripping your laptop apart and trying to do stuff with it. You're already empowered to play around with it and you're not putting a lot of money at risk. Um, as ARM heads into more and more powerful devices like these trim slices, you are starting to see, you know, desktop replacement hardware. Um, clearly, we all we all know that uh, general purpose computing is kind of dying. You know, people are not buying as many workstations anymore. They're more interested in tablets, this kind of thing. Um, the next OLPC is going to be, as as Peter was saying earlier, is going to be a uh, a tablet form factor, um, and that will be running Fedora ARM as well. So. Um, if I pass this guy around as well, this is an old PC, XO 1.75, that's ARM based. Running Fedora ARM, that's got the, uh, Fedora ARM 15 on it right now. Um, so general purpose computing is dying. It's another reason to get interested in, in, in these kinds of devices. ARM hardware is becoming more standard. We're already seeing quad core chips. Um, over the coming years, you'll see eight, 16 cores, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, gigahertz plus frequencies, quite capable uh, computers in their own right. Um, part of the standardization is, you know, it, it, five years ago, we talked about ARM. You might have to think, do I have a floating point chip on this? Can I do these kinds of things? Stuff that Intel people kind of laugh at. Um, don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, the hardware is increasingly standardized. Um, and the range of options you have out there, you've got Raspberry Pis, you've got Beagle Boards, Beagle Bones, they love the stupid names, right, some of these guys, but um, uh, plug computers, which are these little uh, Woolworth shaped size devices, uh, Dennis has one I think there, can you point people at it, so he's got a Guru plug or a Shiva plug there. Somewhere it will it will appear uh, as we as we continue. Yeah, and uh, here we go. That's a That's an entire you know cloud computer in a box if you like, right? Um, and then you've got companies that are starting to build real servers using these as well because you know ARM chips are much much lower power. Um, not in terms of performance, in terms of energy use. They're much lower energy than um, the, uh, a lot of the servers you're seeing out there. And a lot of, a lot of people in the server space measure performance in terms of performance per watt, right? So you may not be able to get an ARM computer that matches your Intel computer uh, in terms of pure performance, pure growth power. But if you have many, many, many low energy cores and you multiply it out, suddenly in aggregate you get a lot more performance for the same energy used. <coughs> John, it's probably worth talking about what that, what kind of densities you see there. Um, yeah, you're, you're looking at um, hundreds and hundreds of individual systems in the space of, of one to two rack units. So the servers you're going to see in the future, you'll have in, in, in one rack unit, you'll have more 
individual systems, if you like, more blades or whatever you want to equate it to, and you would have an entire rack in the past. So it's effectively a rack in a box or more in terms of performance. Um, and we don't have the same uh, thermal problems that you have in, uh, in x86 as well. So uh, thermal dissipation, the need for cooling is reduced as well. What's the, current, what's the current state of the project? Did you ask me a question? The current state of the project, um, over the last year, we've really been working on uh, good support for ARM version 7, which is the latest and greatest uh, out there released hardware. Um, there was a change in the ABI, which is the way that the software is linked together. Uh, there was an ABI change. Uh, that, that, that we chose to make around the V7 time frame that's, uh, that you can do when you uh, have every system having a floating point unit and you can assume that's present, uh, you can optimize for that. So all the different distributions have taken the opportunity to make an incompatible ABI change just once in the course of switching to um, ARM version 7. We could have avoided doing that and we could have kept, uh, you know, backward compatibility in the software uh, with version 5 code. Instead, we decided we didn't have the established user base to make to justify that, so we, we, uh, we took the opportunity there. We treated ARM um, version 7 as complete architecture bootstraps. We did it from first principles, and I wrote some articles on Linux Weekly News about how we did that, so you can refer to those if you're interested. Um, at the same time, we've decided to keep ARM version 5 support around, so we, we currently build two different versions of Fedora ARM. We build ARM version 7 support, and we build an ARM version 5 uh, version of all the packages, and you can install one or the other on your ARM system. Uh, ARM version 5, we, we had debate on killing it off, but there's such wonderful low-cost hardware around that we didn't want to do that. At this point, Fedora 15 is mostly done. Uh, we, uh, we we clearly trail mainline Fedora primary architectures by some time because historically secondary architectures like Fedora ARM would not be able to do their builds, would not be able to put together a release until after x86 had already done so. Um, we've, we've kind of decided to skip Fedora 16 in order that we can get to the point Fedora 17 is released and we can do so very quickly after um, primary architecture, after x86 has released Fedora 17. So what we're doing right now is working on getting Rawhide up and running. Right? So very soon we hope to have um, Fedora 17 versions of ARM packages and be much closer to tracking regular Fedora development um, so you can install a Rawhide version of your, your ARM system. I know it's tiring, but oh, sorry. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get there. You need a far <laughs> Okay. So what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to uh, finish the work we're doing on Rawhide, um, which is what we're working on right now. We're going to try to release Fedora 17 very close to the primary architecture. Um, over the coming year, we're going to move the build system that we have into, uh, hopefully, onto the Phoenix data center that Red Hat help to run uh, that hosts all the other Fedora build systems. Um, the current build system that we have uh, is uh, exciting, really. Um, it, Chris um, and the guys at Sonic College um, started the most recent Fedora ARM effort, right? So there had been stuff in the past that Marvell and Hart had uh, helped start. What Chris did a while back was foolishly, <laughs> or otherwise, Decide to decide to. He's done a great job. They they they, they came along and said, "Look, we really want to revive the Fedora ARM project." Um, they took they took something that was slightly old and out of date from Marvell, um, from the Marvell guys that had worked on it, um, and they have built uh, a a collection of various embedded boards like this. You've got thirty or forty of these in a rack that serve as our builders right now. Um, and you get all the associated fun and games from having this kind of hardware as your build system, rather than having you know servers in racks, right? So uh, Chris can tell you horror stories. Uh, do you want to speak more about the build system? Um, tell more about how that works. 
and I won't I won't spend much time on it. I've done a few blog posts on it, but um, really the challenge that we're facing now is we're we're preparing a system that will need to run on enterprise grade hardware before enterprise grade hardware is available. Um, so the transition to Phoenix that's, that's described here uh, isn't really possible when we've got weird format devices that are reasonably well moderately unstable. Um, but it's it's uh, been an excellent learning adventure um, and and a, a very good technical challenge. And I think we we have um, I think we'll, by the time we're ready to move to Phoenix, we'll have basically proven the viability of, of doing this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now, you know, we've got bullets like this sitting on the shelf. You get, you know, electrical noise problems. All kinds of issues could, uh, you know, cause random build failures, right? So we, we have a number of issues there that, that come from just having embedded bullets on a rack. Um, but the guys at Seneca have done a really awesome job uh, so far in, in, in running that. Um, this collection of random boards is really doing a good job right now, churning through packages. We've had a few hurdles there that I think we're working through. Um, the plan is, as soon as we can get our hands on real enterprise-grade ARM hardware, which some of the people in this room are helping to work on, right? Um, we, uh, we, we will get some of these systems and we will be using what looks more like a blade, a regular blade server system. We're also going to propose later this year, that we become primary architecture. Um, and the reason for that is, again, cheap, readily available hardware, right? Um, I think, and I think most people agree, that uh, ARM is going to be more popular than, than the PC, in due course, right? If, if, not, uh, if not in the, immediately in the enterprise server space or whatever, uh, it's certainly already displacing desktops and laptops, you're already getting tablets taking over the world, right? And we want to remain relevant, right? Fedora needs to, needs to be a relevant distribution. The other guys are doing ARM, right? We need to, we need to respond, we need to, we need to do that too. Um, so uh, there, are many, there are many other good technical reasons why we should become a primary architecture and we're getting ready to do that. And uh, we will be making a proposal to, uh, to FESCO uh, along those lines, with with you know, reasoned argument, but I think these three reasons here are some of the main ones that we really need to take that and really consider that strongly when we make that proposal. Uh, so, a quick question. Yeah, you said it's going to be more popular than PC. Isn't it already more popular than a PC just by the right. sheer number of devices that have been shipped? Yeah, I'm being, I'm being nice, right? Compared to, compared to x86 by volume, I mean, ARM massively displaces anything else out there by volume. Um, in terms of relevance, everyone in this room has a laptop, I think, is still using an x86 laptop. So That's what when I, I talk about, you know, more popular than You're a PC. You're talking about the people writing applications for ARM. Yeah, I, I think over. Even, I mean, like a lot of the devices that um, CPUs ship in today are not end user type devices. You know, they're televisions, they're, I mean, there's tablets and smartphones and all sorts of other phones and fridges and mm -hmm. a lot of places, you know, computer cars and, and what, a, lot, a lot of places where you can't. I know really of one server line actually where the uh, out of band management interface for the server is actually running <coughs> ARM. Yes. So inside the server you have your x86 right. processor and then to manage that you have an ARM processor. And, and, and there's a bunch of them are MIPS as well. Yeah. But yeah. I mean they're not, the, <coughs> right. the, 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 that type of a device is not a, the type of a device where you could really easily or maybe even at all put Fedora on it to run sure. because you know it just doesn't have enough RAM, enough whatever, you know, they're specifically targeted or you don't have any way to access it. Or, so yeah, I mean, like today, it outships CPU numbers, it outships dramatically, but system numbers that are readily hackable, it probably yeah. even is, like phones and stuff like that, but there's no Linux phone right. UI that's very good. I mean, you can't really consider Android because then you may as well run right. Android, you can't just run on top of the door. Sure. So I think, I think you will see the old PC will have a, a general a general tablet device that is very open source and, and will run Fedora. There will be other tablets over the course of the next year or two. 
there will be a lot of these kinds of devices running based on ARM chips that will be able to run through our ARM. Uh, we are not targeting cell phones and, and, and tablets at this point, but I think we will increasingly start to target tablet devices. Chris, you want to add something there? No. no? The KDE guys were talking about adding the plasma tablet stuff to Fedora specifically because you know Fedora ARM is kind of getting there and it's something that is probably a, probably a very viable thing to have. You know, Fedora tablet ARM spinning up, you can jump onto a tablet. And then like, um, where are we with graphics? Right. That kind of made stumble about the That's a big stumble it, it, it is yeah. today. It is today, right? So, so are we getting there? Or? Uh, well, there, there are a number of challenges there with, with post-source drivers, right, at this point, uh, for the embedded devices. Yeah. Now, if you start to see, and we'll come on to this, but if you start to see 64-bit you know, ARM chips in, and we hear all these rumors around Apple making laptops with 64-bit ARM chips in the coming years, who knows, that could be possible. And I think once you see ARM chips displacing x86 in these kinds of applications, yeah. You'll see, you know, regular GPUs. It won't necessarily be the embedded case that you've seen in the past. I think if you get in general purpose systems, systems or more. at least systems where it's not just built for Android. Yeah. As a corollary to that, is, is the ARM current generation ARM CPUs would they be fast enough to run something like Shell or KDE with software rendering with the stuff Ajax is doing with LLVM hype, or are they not fast enough? You still need a frame buffer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do need a. I mean, often you. Can well, it's easier to get a frame buffer than the entire 3D acceleration. Uh, we have frame buffers on just about everything that's kind of video. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of them. The main issue with that is the Fedora, the mainline kernel doesn't have a lot of the frame buffer devices, like the Tegra frame buffer devices and the trip slice on oh, tree. But those are all things that can be fixed. But like, yeah, the fixable. hardware yeah. actually These are all enough to do it? Or? No one knows at this point. Yeah. 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 We'll find out. I mean, over the, over the next year or so, you're, you're going to see you know, quad core yeah. plus systems, multi gigahertz, okay. and it, it's starting to be very viable there to, to do that if you want to. But again, if your x 6 system has full hardware acceleration and then you're looking at some, so it's, it's kind of not really a good comparison. I think, I think once you start to see ARM chips in the next, you know, Apple netbooks maybe, right, if those rumors are true, or whatever, wherever they appear in. And um, we'll support them just as well as we support current Apple netbooks. Well, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, right, right, but, uh, but. Because, you know, Apple is Apple after all. But you, but, but you will see ARM shifting into those kind of devices. Um, how can you help if you're here and you want to help out with Fedora ARM uh, in general, right? So we're currently a secondary architecture. Dennis can tell you much more about the technicalities of that. But uh, what that means is we are running a separate build system at this point for ARM. The plan over the next year is to integrate that into the primary uh, the primary Koji system as a primary architecture, but uh, at this point, uh, rather than uh, what it really means to you is rather than using the Koji command, you're using the arm dash Koji command, right? Which is pointing you at a different Koji instance. Otherwise, exactly the same process. Um, if you are a packager, the main thing is uh, build your bits and make sure they work on arm. Uh, don't discount arm just because you may not be interested in running an arm system today. Uh, a lot of people are. Um, same goes for other secondary architectures, by the way. But um, if you are using exclude arch in your package, um, there are many times that makes sense. If uh, if you are, you know, shipping something like um, DMI decode or something, right, which only works on x86 today, then there's not really a reason to run that on ARM. But if you have a package that doesn't work on ARM or isn't building on ARM. Please fix it if it makes sense. If that's something that should be running on ARM, please help us to fix that. Is there a, is there a web Koji for this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Koji dot Fedora project dot org. So each of the secondary options have a like Spark or BBC or SC90 or Koji dot Fedora project dot org. Yeah. And try to arm dash. So it's exactly the same. So yeah, arm dash Koji is the command you would run rather than running uh, Koji because you're 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 basically pointing Koji at the, the Koji clients on your laptop or your desktop at a different Koji instance. But for the web UI, yeah, it's just it's just 
um, instead of the regular. Uh, it's armed up coach yeah. instead of just coaching. Yeah. Yeah. One, like one the comment the is to build KD on our right now. Yeah. 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 One, uh, one comment about the extreme part. Uh, in many cases, <laughs> it made sense 12 to 18 months ago to exclude stuff because there wasn't language support. There wasn't language support for Haskell, there wasn't language support for OCaml, etc. That's all shown up in the last year, year and a half. So if you if you have an exclude arc in there from two years ago, from a year ago, from eight months ago, uh, it may be time to retest and see if that can come out. And there's a good chance that it can. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of movement here. You've got organizations like Lenaro, which is a a uh, non-profit engineering organization with more than 100 engineers working for it now, established by ARM and many other companies. The point of Lenaro is to, to bring people together to solve engineering problems. They are starting to work on bigger and bigger and more interesting ARM systems as well, so a lot of these upstream problems are being solved collaboratively as well. Um, so, you know, it's very fast moving, a lot of problems are being solved very quickly. If you are in QA, uh, we need help testing just images testing. that we are building, right? We need help developing uh, standardized build processes. Right now, the the way that we install a lot of these systems is is uh, it's still a little ad hoc. We uh, we take a, one of these SD cards, <coughs> put it into a uh, whatever other system, maybe running a different architecture, um, and we populate the card with an image that we have composed um, based on effectively. It's like a cheroot, you just explode out the packages uh, and uh, copy those onto the card in a particular configuration. Um, we want to shift to moving moving to the standard uh, tools that we have for creating images in Fedora. You can look at a lot of these boards like you might an appliance or some kind of virtual machine or something in terms of how you would create images for it. We want to fit into more of that kind of workflow. Um, we want also to fix issues with, you know, help us test critical path packages, help us test uh, any of the base uh, parts of the system, especially as we're moving to primary architecture, or wanting to move to primary architecture, let's, uh, let's fix any obvious problems there. Um, if you are an ambassador, take advantage of low-cost hardware. If you, if, you, you know, if you need help buying something, please let us know, right? If there's a rational reason for us to help you get hardware and you can't afford one of these boards, uh, let us know. Um, you know, a lot of these are you know, $30, $100 kind of price range, pretty affordable. A lot of people want them anyway to play with. Um, we would like it if ARM was always represented at events like FUDCON, if there was always somebody who could speak about the great stuff that we're doing. If you are a user, try it out and give us feedback, right? If you want to buy one of these boards and play around with it, uh, if you happen to walk away with a coupon today and get one, uh, then uh, please try it out, right? One condition on giving away these boards is that we do actually want you to run Fedora on it, and not a different release distribution. Um, and please help us writing doc documentation, right? Because we, we are not always the best at writing documentation. Um, it can be an afterthought, and um, our wiki, which does exist, does have content, Fedora, the Fedora on wiki, um, could certainly do with a little bit more content sometimes. Or just ask questions, because if you ask questions and we have to answer it a couple times, we'll know, oh, we should document that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you gotta think, a lot of us have done, you know, embedded Linux stuff in the past, and we've come at this with many years of experience in, you know, screwing around with uh, chips, and, and you know, uh, Brendan, I'm not gonna do this, but you, you did point out to me, um, I wanted to talk about hardware debugging as part of my talk. And it was very rightly pointed out to me that nobody here cares about hardware debuggers, so that's fine, okay? Um, to me, this is just something I have at home, I play around with, I hook this up to here, and I treat it with GDB like you would software, just stop it and you know play around with breakpoints. Um, a lot of people who are used to using x86 laptops, for example, maybe not are not thinking about this with the same mindset that some of us are, and so if you come and you ask us questions, we will learn, right? We can learn. We will learn uh, uh, what the issues are and how people who are not familiar with this technology approach it and the kinds of concerns they have. Um, so feedback and documentation is very useful. What's happening in the future, right? What's, what's further out? Um, well, uh, 
um, did announce uh, that they have a 64-bit version of the architecture coming. So over the next few years, um, you will start to see much more higher powered um, ARM systems out there with you know, four cores, eight cores, 16, and so forth, right? Um, you'll see it used in a lot more places where you see x86 today. Um, there already is virtualization support uh, for ARM, for 32-bit ARM systems. So even in the time frame of these kinds of boards, over the next year, there's going to be something called Cortex A15, which um, for the first time supports more than four gig of memory, right? So ARM have a, a thing called LPAE, works a lot like PAE on x86. I know, it's a little cringeworthy, right? But you've got a 32-bit architecture at this point. There's only so many things you can do. They do have a hack. It is kind of a hack to get 40-bit uh, addressing on this, physical addressing. So you will start to see devices over the next year that have more than 4 gig of physical memory. They have virtualization even in the 32-bit space. Um, later this year, we expect to see the first this year, next year, we start, start to see the first 64-bit uh, silicon. That has virtualization built in from day one. It, it always has uh, floating point support. It always has a lot of things like that. And ARM have published the details, so you can go and download it from uh, the ARM Info Center on ARM.com. Um, and we expect to see a lot of enterprise adoption as well. So we expect to see the first generation of ARM servers this year, and over the next few years, uh, more and more uh, interesting ARM um, server hardware as well. What can you run this on now? Well, we've kind of answered that already, but um, if you if you want advice on particular hardware, you can of course ask us. You know, tell us what you're looking for, and we can try to help you out with some recommendations. Um, you could do a lot worse than winning or buying one of these devices for thirty bucks. A lot of people, you know, thirty bucks is kind of throwaway money to a lot of folks, so. Um, that's kind of fun. Um, if you want to spend hundreds of dollars, you can buy one Brendan has. It's like 300 bucks. That's no, 250. 250. No drive-in. About 100 bucks is for the aluminum, right? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Right. But uh, um, you know, uh, it varies by by what you want to get. Can we go to questions? I think I want to. Uh, should we do the giveaway yeah, now? Let's let's do a bit. Yeah. Uh, just by show of hands, how many are interested in doing a 10 second pitch and uh, chance to win some hardware? Okay, so. <clears throat> You're probably uh, pretty close. We've got one anyway. Okay, pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I want to hear the pitches regardless. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would do this pitch stuff here. Yeah, do you guys want to just form a. Okay, anybody who wants to do a pitch, come up here. Right here. Oh, uh, do we have a uh, non-red uh, hat? You know, I think I want to say non-red non hat. Uh, non-red hat, non-Seneca, unfortunately. We've got if, to, uh, if you work for red hat and you want a Raspberry Pi, send me an email. I may be able to make one appear. <coughs> He better send more to have one of your before. He he is he is on my list. Okay. My pitch was just going to be you should give one to John anyway. <laughs> so um, I think thirty seconds. Well, I don't need that long. My pitch is very simple. I'm QA. <laughs> All, right. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Do work pitch. Love it. So what I want to make is take a little Raspberry Pi or something, a little ARM device, and plug in a tiny speaker and just kind of hide this somewhere in the house and have just a tiny little portable speaker and use your PMP DLA or something to stream music directly to it. That's kind of fun, like a Sonus, like your uh, yep. home <coughs> Yeah, that's kind of fun. As long as it's on. Yeah. As long as it's, it's on. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're doing air tunes, you know, we'll take that back. Right? But, so my pitch is that uh, start writing ARM test cases. <laughs> when it comes to things outside of x86, I'm functionally retarded and an ambassador who does between two and four events a year. And if I could figure out what to do with it, I could stand in front of other functionally retarded people and go, hey, look, this is cool, and it only cost you 30 bucks. Well, we would like you to do that, so please, <laughs> please have a fantastic yeah, I would just like to help test it, and you know, if I find bugs, I'd like to report them, maybe even get on board and help develop them. 
So, uh, you know those uh, huds that airplanes have? What I would like to do is make an open version of that in a car or some other like submarine be even sweeter. I think that would be A heads up display on the. On the yeah. I, would, on I would love to have a digital readout for all your engines. When you get that working, let me know. Because I want that too. I'll be sure to let you know. Just keep my ability. So I have two points. I have the first one is uh, for my company. We are leading a team. And we're working on uh, an embedding platform, Intel and ARM. So we actually working, the base uh, system is Fedora. And we're developing an OpenGL interface. So that's why. And the second point is I'm running our Fusion and we don't have support for ARM. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 well, not just for work. I've been thinking about having a small embedded system computer to do API logging. That's what we do. We, we test Android phones, and Windows is kind of getting in the way. So we already have a Fedora box. So we use it a tiny computer and save my log files. That's a of a raise. Right? Yeah. Support of a raise. <laughs> Excellent. So I guess we'll keep this for, for the next session. Sure. The next for a coupon. Um, well, uh, okay, to redeem these, the Raspberry Pi uh, first batch of 10,000 is in production. Uh, it's probably, the production cycle is about three weeks, and they're half a week or a week into it. So about two, two and a half weeks from now, they're going to they're gonna ship. Uh, between now and then, uh, contact me, Chris, at... Uh, C Tyler at FedoraProject.org, and uh, give me your your cert number, and I will give you an e-commerce code to get a package from directly from RaspberryPi.org. Can you say your email address yes. again? Yes. As part of this, please also do sign up, and so um, there will be Raspberry Pi images coming from the project. There will be a lot of buzz around Raspberry Pi in the Fedora project. Chris will go into more on this in his talk. Uh, which is in, I think, an hour from now, right, at three. So, um, what I'd like to do is uh, give an opportunity for anybody to ask questions. Before that, uh, if you work for Red Hat and you want an ARM board or something like this, please let me know, JCM, and we might be able to help you acquire something like this. Questions? Anyone have a question? So I bought a, a Beagle board a year ago, and I tried to participate in a couple of the of your uh, uh, development days, and didn't really get very far. And I inferred from some of the answers I got that the Beagle board's kind of a red-haired stepchild among the ARM developers. And can you speak to that a little bit? I, I think the main so the Beagle board's not not really a red-haired stepchild. Far from it. In fact, the the, the main problem with Beagle board at this point is. Um, sadly, we get distracted by shiny things, and uh, you know, Panda board came along, which is you know dual core as opposed to single core and slightly more shiny. What I would say is, uh, ever since the um, Beagle Bone came out, which is basically a slightly souped up Beagle board, that's kind of revived interest there. So I suspect that there will be uh, more interest. We do have images that work today on the. Uh, Beagle board, so uh, you should be able to take what we have and, and use it. Do you have, do you have a, a C4 or an XM? XM. An XM. Yeah, it work there's, there's people running XM, Fedora 15 on the XM. So yeah. Video video on the XM because of the proprietary bits from TI is a bit of a chore, but the rest of it, standard images, uh, should be fine. Yeah. And we'd be glad to work with you on, on It's a standard that. OMAP device, like this, this is the SNOMAP 4, SNOMAP 3, but it's basically. Uh, um, Supported by the the OMAP kernel that we have. So we have more speed five, right? No, no, we have more speed seven. Yeah. Yeah. The really the the main V five devices that you're going to get out there today is one of these Guru Shiva plugs. The plug type devices, the Guru plug and Shiva plug are both V five. The Raspberry Pi is a V six, which 
what we're running the seven stuff, so <coughs> running the V5 right. code. Um, and a lot of the plug type devices, a lot of the like the Western Digital NASs and stuff are running yeah. V5 ARM CPUs in them. And but they've already announced the QNAP and stuff like that are running V5. So there's a lot of NASs running mm -hmm. V5 stuff, but that's about what you the limit of what you're going to get with the V5 hardware today. But, they, they, but they've already announced the you know the next generation of plug computers are already V7. So over the course of the next year or so, everything's going to move over. Yeah. Just to go back to the question about the Beagle XM, you can use the same root file system that Seneca is using every day on the Beagle XM and it'll just work. So, yeah, that wasn't check again and then we'll. Well, I think, okay. I think if, you, if, you, if you joined yeah. early on, we were. Yes, yeah, um, I just wanted to be selfish and ask you to go over the virtualization stuff again because I was totally fixing my mouth so I'm not talking. The virtualization is coming. Yes, yeah, coming. That's the uh, summary. Yeah, yeah, there is there is virtualization support in the 32-bit hardware right. that's coming this year. So, in theory, virtualization could be good. We just need to write the software for it. There is there is both simulators that and have the virtualization well, implemented. Okay, and there are implementations of the of both Zen and KVM. Yeah. In process right now. Okay. Both of them more or less work. Yeah. yeah. But we have I/O virtualization the whole deal. So. It it should be noted too though that there's going to be a new style of of cloud computing yeah. on ARM because of of hyperscale. So with with hundreds with ten thousand cores in one rack, yeah. uh, you can do on. There's all reconciling what would have done right with it's not about yeah. 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 So there's going to be some interesting yeah. new yeah. approaches that that we want to do. But that's what I want to do. It's all like a virtual machine test stuff. Right. So so actually virtualization. But you can you can also do QMU today just for doing virtual test cases. So Q, you got the address here? Yeah, there's the how list good is, How good is QMU for it? I'll put it on, on there. Is it, is it uh, QMU? Uh, okay. QMU support on x86 for, of ARM? No, on ARM of anything. On ARM of anything else? No idea. We've <laughs> never been trying. No, we, we, hard. I mean, people do use it. If you want to run an emulated ARM machine, or if you want to run either, either right, I'm going to use an ARM machine, or you can try to emulate x86. Just because I'm sadistic. Oh, well, okay. People, people have done it. People have run QMU, but um, uh, you know they. But it would be. I think it would be useful if I could run. If I could do actually emulate ARM on there. Yeah. Is yeah, then they then. You can emulate ARM on x86. Yeah. Um, I'm saying emulate ARM on ARM. Uh, 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 ARM on ARM. Uh, yeah. There's there's, uh, there's possible. The I can't give you information. On it, it has been tried because as part of bringing up the virtualization, you know, uh, uh, there's a there's a separate I/O piece in QMU just for doing the I/O virtualization. But people have run. I don't know why you'd want to do this in general, but it has been. It does. Oh, it does. For instance. Well, we're going to do it on the x86 virtual machine on top of x86. Yeah, back. it does. Yeah. It does work, and, and pretty much most yeah. software, yeah. you know, just works at this point on ARM. It's a little Indian architecture. It's very similar to x86. Yeah, the V7 hardware is uh, a lot of the problems we had in the past have gone away. It's very similar. ARM V8, <coughs> in comparison with x86, is smells a lot like it uh, from the, from the point of view of the implementation. The, the reason I'm at, well, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Say, the reason I'm asking is, you know, if we're, if we can use various. Like for instance, it would be cool to have a lot of the same infrastructure that's available in x86 lands on ARM. Yeah. If, if it ARM becomes a primary market, and yep. that a lot of that requires virtualization. And, and it will be there. Yeah, be there. And and possibly virtualization frameworks extend to so you do physical cloud. That's a possible alternative. There's a question for that? Uh, yeah, related to that, what's the status of QUR on x86? Performance of that on the previous generation of Intel chips was uh, an order of magnitude slower than on actual ARM hardware. But it actually does work. Surprisingly, oh, that's great. on i7s, we're getting 
almost the, almost screw plug level performance. Okay. And mind you, that's using a twelve hundred dollar x86 box to emulate a hundred twenty dollar arm box. But, but if you happen to have a twelve hundred dollar x86, but yeah, it's not doable. My goal is to be able to build arm images with a live media creator, and I'm using Bert to do that. So I need to be able to emulate arm. Yeah, you you, yes. you could you could do that. We yeah. we don't we don't use virtualization for. For build machines, for example, we do build on target for various reasons, but um, yeah, it works fine for the There season. actually are directions for it on the project. Yeah, we have, we have even directions on the project. It's probably a little bit out of date on the wiki, but it's safe. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Smart Reggie Buggers. Oh, there is a good work. low cost yeah. Smart Reggie Buggers with a free software stack on it. Yes, exactly this one here. Uh, this is a fly swatter from tincantools.com. Uh, this is $50. It, uh, it's a JTAG debugger that does, it can do ARM, it can do MIPS, it can do all different standards. When you get it, it'll come with one of these cables. You plug this in here. You plug this into the board, which has a JTAG header on it. You install OpenOCD, which is an open source uh, on-chip debugging. And uh, that's it. Then you can use GDB-driven breakpoints to debug your, uh, your target. 50 bucks. That's cool. It's not bad, right? Um, so if you're if you're interested in hardware, the other side of getting into ARM is you can learn about how to do things like, you know. Like, say, my dad was playing with back in the late 70s. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go, to, go to his talk at 3. You don't get off. Go to his talk at 3. It'll be a 209.